Hello, welcome back to Two Day Past, Two Day Crew. My name is Scott, and today's video is another Chertsey route. So we're at the test centre, and we're about to drive off. We're going to show you again a very difficult route here, and it's going to be a big highlight where we're going to stop on a forty mile an hour dual carriageway on the left, and then we're going to have to <laughs> cancel it. No, we're not. Why? It's what, not what? a dual carriageway. It's not a dual carriageway. It's a single carriageway. It's a single carriageway. So we're going to stop on a single carriageway on the left. It's still going to be 40 miles an hour. Okay. And then we're going to have to move away. Now, uh, from what I've been told from half stick here, he is kind of talkative. Um, then it's quite a difficult area, and you must know this for your driving test. So are we ready, Stiggy? Let's go. Let's go. Right, so we're turning out the test centre here, nice and slow. Slow on the entry, slow on the exit That's for your driving test centre. And have a look what's happening here on our non-360 camera. You've just seen the vehicle in front of us come from this left-hand side. So we're in an industrial area. We're just peep and creeping. We've got pedestrians walking around here. You know, there could be anyone coming out of these parking spaces here. Turning right here at the exit to the test center. Remember what I just said? Slowly, slowly. So whenever you you're... Look through the gaps of the parked cars. Whenever you're starting your driving test, nice and slow. Look through the gaps in the parked cars here because it's very difficult to see this main road. And as you notice, if you've seen the previous video, very, very narrow road here. Most test centers may have a narrow entry or some kind of complicated system as you're going in and out. So you definitely want to try and practice that or do some research on YouTube to try and see the test center. So I've pulled up here just on the left. Now, normally people believe that they're not allowed to pull up in places like this because of the theory test, but it is a legal spot to pull up. There's no raised, uh, sorry, there's no road markings and there is no drop curb. So you've got a nice raised curb with no markings. You can stop there. All round observations are must signal before you drive off. Just when you pull in, you'd signal. And when you pull out, you would always signal. So for your driving test, always signal. We're going to do a reverse park here. Parallel park if you are from the Stone Ages. Reverse park. <laughs> I'm just joking. Everyone still calls it parallel park. Um, so pull up alongside the vehicle here on the left. And then what I'd like you to do is, to, I'm assuming I'm the examiner now, reverse back roughly two car lengths and finish a reasonable distance from the curb, Mr. Stiggy. So you know what? I'm going to show you something here this is how we do it in our cars we make life nice and easy for you you see this little line here that line touches the curb and then my colleague here starts to adjust his steering so as you can see that he's doing a full lock to the right this shows you that you might get a little bit close that is the tire you can always have a look in your mirrors and see the curb down there and then you just adjust your steering bring yourself forwards Bring yourself back again. It's all nice and easy to see on the camera and in the mirrors. So it shouldn't be too tricky. I hope you like my filming skills there. My uh, chicken head gimbal. Right, and we're off again. So now don't rush, guys. Take your time, Stiggy. There might be vehicles coming from the right. So all-round observations. Make sure you see the traffic on the main road we're going to be turning left now at the roundabout first exit mirror signal position into the left lane slowly slowly roughly a jogging speed as you reach the junction so remember we talked about slow on the entry slow on the exit yes slow on the entry to junctions will always help you out slow on the exit to junctions may or may not depending on the situation so just make sure that when you're approaching the junction you do it slowly it's so important look at the speed change here on the left we have a 40 mile an hour road oh my god so we're gonna pull up on the left this is the part so this is where we've been asked to pull up on the left again we've got no road markings here raised curb this is a legal spot we're at least 10 meters from the junction which is what's suggested by highway code and there is plenty of room for the on 
on the vehicles, the oncoming traffic and the vehicles behind us to still continue to pass each other. So we're not blocking the main road. As you can see, the passing round here, yes, it slowed them down a little, but we're stopping, we're parking, we're not blocking the road. This is safe. You can do this. Take your time now, Stiggy. When it's safe, drive on, please. Now, this is also very important. You mustn't rush them moving away. As I pointed out from Stiggy last time, there might have been a vehicle coming. Now, the vehicle vehicle actually did decide, if you want to rewind the video and go back to our last position where we stopped on the left, did decide to stop for Stig, and then we actually were able to move away. Now, that vehicle decided to stop. We didn't force them to stop, and that is the difference on your driving test. If you're forcing someone to stop or slow down, or you force them to swerve, that's sticking your nose out at a junction, these are serious faults. Someone stops for you, and then you take the initiative to go. This is actually probably a safer decision, but you must act immediately. People don't have a lot of patience anymore so someone stops for you and you decide it's safe to go and you're confident enough then follow through with the action try not to hesitate too much and this will actually increase your safety so just plenty of practice build your confidence see the situation many times and then you'll be able to deal with it just like this situation here so we're coming towards double roundabouts now and we're going to go straight across. So two roundabouts, very important. You observe both roundabouts. Like I said on the previous video, observations, number one failure on driving tests. No vehicles on the right there. Approaching the second roundabout now, we're going straight. Look at the road markings using the left lane. Nice big straight arrow. arrow. Look at the right-hand side, and we have no vehicles coming from the right-hand side, so it's safe for us to proceed. If you do have the oncoming traffic, sometimes people worry that the oncoming traffic Traffic may continue to keep going round the roundabout. Like I said on the previous video, do look at the wheels of the vehicles. They're more of a guarantee of telling exactly where the vehicles are going to go. Signals are good, and nice good clues, but we're all human. We all make mistakes. Sometimes people accidentally signal, and this might mislead you, but if you look at the wheels, you will be a confident, safe driver and know exactly where they're going. Perfect. We're approaching the roundabout. We've got the directions here. Second. First... Second. second exit towards Woking. So, yep, that's uh, quite a common theme at Chertsey Test Centre, following signs to Woking. 80% uh, chance on your driving test to have the sat-nav tell you where to go, which you may or may not know about. So that's actually an easier way to do your test. Wait, so wait. we want to try and keep our left lane to go straight. Second exit, this wait, roundabout. Wait. Now we're going to Waybridge, which is a slip road. Now this road is like a VIP lane. It doesn't join you into the roundabout. It passes you around the outskirts of the roundabout. And it's quite common for this VIP lane, which is why I call it a VIP lane, to keep going. So you just have your own little path to just slip through the whole queue of traffic over there and you're on your way. And it's very nice and safe as well because there's no lane changes, not even really necessary to put on a signal because this lane is only going this way and your position is also regarded as a signal. Looking down the road ahead, I see warning triangles. We're going to do the second exit at this roundabout. What's nice is we have the countdown markers here. So we've got these white rectangles with these black lines in them. They can be different colors, but they all mean the same thing. It's just counting down every 100 yards or every 100 meters. They're very similar measurements towards the junction. Remember what I said earlier? Slow down. So you want to go from like a superhuman running speed to a jogging speed. And as you approach around about a jogging speed, this gives you plenty of time to now check briefly to the right to see the traffic. If you see traffic, the safer decision is to start to slow down to a walking speed. And if there's still traffic, come to a stop. Now we've peeped out, we've seen there's no traffic on the right, and we're following the left lane to do the second exit at the roundabout. Now some of the bigger roundabouts, like this roundabout, and this is the biggest roundabout, I believe, at Chertsey. We're going over the M25 here. You won't be asked to use the motorway as far as I'm aware, and it's nice and smooth sailing, not too difficult. Now we're in the right lane. We've used this lane off the roundabout because we had to. We had the hatch markings on the on the left side separating us. Wow, look at the car in front from the VIP lane that this side was. And now we've, re, we've rejoined the left. 
very important that we rejoin the left lane as soon as it's safe to do so. Now you notice that vehicle back there did slow down, pull into the left, so we just adjust our speed, we've assessed the vehicle, seen the actual signal on the vehicle, the brake lights coming on as well, now we decide and we act, so we decide to slow down, give, you know, a bit of space. Okay, we're going to be turning left at the next roundabout. Again, I'm just going to bring up these countdown markers. So we're on a 50 mile an hour road. We're doing roughly 45 miles an hour here. We're at the second marker now. We've slowed down to roughly 40 miles an hour. Now this is where it really starts to matter. The last marker, the 100 yards. Brakes are on now, quite slow, jogging speed, and we're about 50 yards out from the roundabout, jogging speed. So it's nice and delicate, adjusting the speed, giving the examiner a nice, comfortable, safe drive. Also allowing you to have plenty of time to now do your observations to the right. So we're looking to the right here, and if we need to stop, we've got our giveaway lines here where we come to a stop, and we wait until there's a safe time to join and turn left here. Nice and easy, lots of space, good observations there. It's an open junction, that means that it's good visibility, there's no obstructions. So if you hear anybody driving examiner or an instructor referred to as an open junction, you know what that means. And obviously you can probably guess what a closed junction means. It's the complete opposite where you have obstructions. Okay, at the traffic lights, turn left, Stiggy. All right, we're going back towards Chertsey Town Centre here. We've got our own lane and a filter light, a green arrow. Now that green arrow means it's safe for you to go in the direction that the green arrow shows and that actually holds all the other traffic. Obviously, keep doing your observations just in case someone's you know, not seen a traffic light or a bicycle's gone through a light, as an example. Okay, I, I rode a bicycle for many years. Please don't slate me in the comments for, for bicycles, and I know a lot of people don't like them. Anyways, just keep looking, make sure it's clear, but if you've got a green filter arrow, it's pretty safe for you to continue. Make sure you focus on those green arrows. Some people don't see green arrows. They don't go, they stop because they see another red light. They don't see their green arrow, they stop, and you will fail your driving test because you're stopping at a green light and you will be holding traffic up behind you. Remember the three S's? Slow, stop, and stig. Slow, stop, swerve. They equal serious fault. That means you will fail your driving test, so be very in the know. Okay, so we've got a lorry oncoming here. We're checking our mirrors, the space between the car that's pulled up on the left and the lorry, because the lorry was nice to give us space. Mini roundabout, turning right, second exit, no, going straight, sorry, first exit. There's so many cars on the right, loads of traffic here, everyone's blocked, we can move across. We've got our traffic light here. Now, this is really important. If this was a zebra crossing and there wasn't a traffic light, People could quite easily keep going, but with all this traffic that's built up on the right, it's quite easy for a pedestrian to be hidden or obstructed by the traffic. So unless you've had this situation come up where you've been driving down a main road, there's a zebra crossing, there's a queue of traffic on the right, and you've had that person come out behind the queue of traffic, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, must pay attention, it's very dangerous. So we're going straight to the roundabout, second exit here, coming back towards the test center. Not that I know where I am, but I'm assuming we're pretty close now. So we've got another road here, a bit narrow, although it's not too bad. The center line's really important. So if you have an oncoming vehicle going over the center line, you're probably in need to stop and give that vehicle priority to keep coming until there's space for you to keep going. So watch the center line. You can also use the center line as a reference point for your own lane discipline. So if the center line's in the bottom right-hand corner of your windscreen, you'll hear me come up with lots Lots of different tips, by the way, on other videos, and I actually show this reference point to you. So if you want to go check out the channel, do that. Then you can use that as a reference point to guide you into the center of your lane. So we're turning left, we're in a left-only lane, nobody on the roundabout, nice and smooth. Look out for zebra crossings. Not that there was one here, but you saw there were some pedestrians. It's very common to have a zebra crossing at a roundabout. It doesn't seem to be the case at Chertsey, though. I haven't seen any zebra crossings at any of these roundabouts. Probably because they're more controlled, the pedestrian crossings, by the traffic lights because these are bigger roundabouts, okay? They're only two lanes, three lanes, but 
Okay, we're turning left, first exit, roundabout, check your mirrors, internal, external, left, obviously slow on the entry like we've been talking about earlier, that nice slow jogging speed, and then we're going to be going straight down. Now look long, you want to see any oncoming traffic, we have the, the ladies here, you know, they might kind of trip or something so we do want to take care of the pedestrians there and it's very narrow so we might have to give space like from these cones here those pedestrians might need to give them a little bit of space because they're very close to the edge of pavement but at the same time we've got the oncoming traffic so this would be an area where you would come down up i know where i am we're at the test center but areas like this you could also be asked to do maneuvers now there's a car coming out of the side road on the left did you see that through the gap in the actual pavement here? So we've got this gap here, and just through that gap there, we could see the oncoming car. So we stopped early because if that car had come out, we'd all be blocked here at the main part of the road. Yeah, so they might, well, they might not have seen us. Yeah, they might not have seen us as well. So it's very important that you take lots of care. Like I said at the beginning of the video, slow on the entry, slow on the exit. So whenever you're coming in and out of the test center, nice and gentle. Okay, so we're back at the test center. Again, forward. nothing too complicated. Just take your time. We're going to do a forwards bay park here, which you would probably do at another car park. Usually you would use the test center car park to do your reverse bay park. And you should only get your reverse bay park if your test center has one. Uh, otherwise, you'll go to a public car park and do Ford's Bay Park like we've just done. All right, so obviously Stiggy knows what he's looking for, but we're looking for the white lines to be just down the side of the vehicle. Equal gap on both sides, and then you know you're in the bay. I've been Scott. This is Dine Pass. Leave a like on the video if you got this far. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.